G'day, I'm Mighty, and welcome to the Mighty Outdoors. This is day eight of my epic solo bike packing pilgrimage adventure around the island of Shikoku, doing the Ohendro 88 Temple Circuit. Um, now, last night, of this, okay, so this is day eight. Yesterday was the end of the very first week. And as a quick recap, I started at temple number one, and yesterday I was able to visit all the temples so far as 38. This morning, going from 39 onwards. Um, last night I camped here at the Nikko Nikko Park. Nikko Nikko means like little smile. Anyway, when I stayed at the Nikko Nikko Park, beautiful spot, but the wind last night, oh my goodness, it picked up. Uh, stuff went, <laughs> everything that wasn't tied down was flying around, you know. It was the first night that I was really happy to have a have the sleeping bag. Uh, up until now, I haven't really, haven't used it. Uh, but I got it out last night because the wind brought the temperature down. Uh, and uh, yeah, 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 look, that's, uh, <laughs> the, 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 but the real positive upshot is that all the washing that I did yesterday is now stone dry. It's fantastic. Dry as a bone. Anyway, so despite the fact that this is a beautiful place, I've got some. I've got to get to uh, Temple Number Thirty Nine. So let's pack up and let's uh, hop to it. Get off the couch, ditch all the chores. Let's go for an adventure in the mighty outdoors. old fella turned up. Turns out he uh, he was an engineer on a cargo ship that used to go to Sydney and Fremantle for quite a bit. Anyway, we got a chatting and he recommended the route that I'm on now. Rather than going all the way around the coast or going over the high mountains in the most direct route, he said, take this road number 28 it's a long, gradual climb, but it's the road to take. And you know what? He is spot on. There's very little traffic, and it's just this gradual climb. Been on it a couple of kilometres, of course, but rhythm, and you just sort of roll on up it. It's right next to a a creek, so, you know. A thin river and it's really pretty. A few farmers out in the fields, you know, wish them a good morning. They always seem happy to see me, which is nice. Must be the moustache. That's, oh, that's what I'm that's what I reckon it is. It's definitely the mo. Yeah.
So I've just arrived at the Enkorji, Temple Number 39. I'm going to go in and check it out. I was just thinking to myself, man, I'm so glad that yesterday I didn't try to push on to make it here after Temple 38. I wouldn't have made it in time, of that I'm sure, but also I think I would have ruined part of the experience. So from that, I hope that I've learned sometimes you have to know when to say enough's enough. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go pay my respects and uh, check out the temple. まあ、ちっちゃい子からさ大きい子になるやな。素敵です。From Temple 39 towards Temple 40, and I've got to the Masaki Tunnel, which in itself is only 226 meters long, it's nothing remarkable. However, this tunnel is the demarcation point between Kochi Prefecture and Ehime Prefecture. So, as I pass through this tunnel, I will have finished this part of my adventure in Kochi and we'll continue in Ehime. So, to put this in context, there are four prefectures in Shikoku. I, when I go through this tunnel, will have completed all the temples in two of them. So there you go. 39 temples out of 88. Two prefectures done. And I'm on day eight. That's where we're at. Okay. Let's go. Actually, before I make my way through the tunnel, I again want to thank all the wonderful people who I've met in Kochi Prefecture. They were so kind to me. At times where I was in desperate need, when it looked like everything was coming crashing down, that my pilgrimage adventure was going to come to an end. The people of Kochi Prefecture helped me. I am incredibly grateful. Thank you so much. Kochi no mina sama. Domo arigatou gozaimashita. Kansha shimasu. Okay, now let's go through the tunnel. First of the temples in Ehime Prefecture. Uh, lovely gate. Uh, so let's let's take a bit of a look. Let's see what we've got. It's quite pretty, this one. Beautiful colours on the main temple.
windy. But it's so beautiful. Catches you out. Man. Woo! Alright. I thought I'd just take a second while I've arrived at this tunnel to provide you a bit of information about Japanese driving etiquette and Japanese road building. First, the drivers. I've been really impressed by the way that the drivers in Shikoku give plenty of space on the road for bicycles. Um, Often they will go to the other side of the line, uh, you know, even if it's a double, double stripe one like the one you can see here, just to give you space. Okay, so look, I always try and stay on the far left, as, as safe as it possibly can be, but I've, I've really appreciated the way that the drivers have responded uh, and have, have made me feel safe by, by giving me plenty of space. They don't come up right up next to you um, like they do in other parts of the world. Secondly, on road building, roads here are really good. When you're planning your route and when you're driving around or when you're on your bicycle, the back, what I've figured out is that if the, if the, if the, if the road is labelled as, for example, E56, it's an expressway, you can't go on it. If it has a three digit number, then it is a major metropolitan road, okay? Uh, maybe it's multiple lanes, you know, very good tarmac and all the rest. If it's a two digit, if it's a, if, if it's a road that's labelled with two digits, like, like this one is uh, 56 or 28 or 79, they are also really good. They carry less traffic, um, but again, very well made and, uh, and they tend to be the most direct route I've found between two places. So when I'm moving between some of the temples over the last couple of days, especially over long distances, I've been trying to stay on roads that are double digits. Single digit roads, however, also offer very good condition, um, but are definitely more narrow. They carry far less traffic, uh, and, um, and they're more you know, provincial you know, uh, in nature. So it depends on what sort of levels of confidence you have as to which road you want to choose as well as what's available to you and where you're headed um, but uh, I've, like I said I've been riding majority of the last couple of days on double digit roads and I've found them really good uh, and uh, and perhaps that's if you're coming to do the trip yourself perhaps especially on a bicycle then perhaps something that's something which you'll consider as well uh, last thing is in Ehime Prefecture, I've seen this a couple of times and I haven't seen it in, in many other areas. Um, but where they have, on, on a road like this one, you can see up there, you've got a, you know, I've just got a long tunnel uh, with not much on the side, right? It's really, if you're a cyclist, 
you'd have to ride you know, on the far left straight up. However, at a bunch of these sorts, they've also built a pedestrian and cyclist um, bridge, oh, sorry, bridge tunnel immediately next to it as well. So I can just take this one and and they basically, you know, they meet up at the other end. It's a really considerate way to design it. And I think it's just another great example of how the people of Shikoku and, you know, by extension, the authorities uh, really appreciate and value those people who are here either traveling around Shikoku as just, you know, just doing the island loop or also um, those who are here as pilgrims doing the Ohendro 88 Temple Loop. Um, anyway, look really good. Very, very impressed. I hope that's useful. And uh, yeah, all the very best if you decide to do the trip yourself. Almost there, almost there. Ah. So, I've worked out where I'm staying uh, tonight. I'm just going to camp, get a bit of grass behind like a, a Michinoeki at one of those roadside stations. But in the meantime, I've come to a Japanese bar. Now, there's no cameras allowed inside for obvious reasons. Um, but I'm going to go have a nice soak in the tub and then I'm going to go and have some katsu or fish. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Have a good feed. Anyway, so I'll bake it and clean and scrubbed up. <sighs> well, that was very refreshing. Nice and clean again after a hundred kilometers on the bike. It's great to have a nice hot Japanese bar. However, this was a little bit different to this one. Um, nice enough local place. Five or six different types of bars, you know, one that's got uh, royal jelly in it, so it has a yellow colour. Uh, one that was very hot, one that was very cold, and so on and so forth, showers and all that sort of jazz. But I'm there in the bar, and there's probably about eight or nine guys in there. Uh, you know, people having showers, various bars, all that sort of stuff. And then in walks this skinny guy, shaved head. Yakuza tats. Right. From about his elbows up to his shoulder blades, both sides, and down on the thigh. Oh, some of the other guys sort of looked like they were a little bit nervous. Now, I'd never seen a Yakuza in a bathhouse before, because usually they're not allowed in. Um, a lot of baths in bigger cities will say, will have signs up the front to say, you know, no tattoos. Right? Even if you're a foreigner with tattoos, sometimes you'll be denied entry, even if you're obviously not a Yakuza. Um, you know, this guy was, this guy, you know, he was fine. He came in, he, he uh, scrubbed up, and uh, he jumps in the bath with me. So there we are. Mighty and the Yakuza, sitting there in the royal jelly bath. Say nothing. I'm not looking at him. He's not looking at me. Couple of minutes pass by. Done. He turns, has a glance at me. Uh, I have a glance at his fingers. Uh, he's still got them all. He obviously hasn't upset anybody too much. Uh, and then off he goes. Gets out, gets scrubbed up, takes off. Everyone else in the place it was most noticeably more relaxed when he'd left. But uh, yeah, there you go. So there you go. Bathing with the bathing with the gangsters. There you go. Only right here in the mighty outdoors. Anyway, wonderful bathhouse. Highly recommend it. It's been great. Now I'm going to go off and get some dinner.